Welcome everyone, this is Tactical Itch here and today we are back to domination mode with our corn dog spawn camping tactics and since we are fighting Tinj today, we are switching up the build quite a bit as blood letters with their reliance on physical resistance would be a huge problem against the magic attacks on the Tinj army. And since the Tinge doesn't have the heaviest of armor, so the armor piercing anti infantry attacks of the Blood Letters will be quite a waste. So instead, we will be bringing the Corn Warriors, the Shield and Axe one, to be our main frontline, supported by, as usual, a bunch of Flesh Hounds and Chaos Furies in the skies. As for the leadership, we are no longer running with the Double Chaos Cultists and the Herald of Corn. And instead, we have the Exalted Bloodthirster, a powerful melee combatant. In the um, reserve army, we also have the Gorbius Chariot, which is our secret weapon against the Tinge army. And other than that, we have more Cornet Warriors as well as Soul Grinder as a cheaper single entity option to fight any big monsters like their Soul Grinder and also Lord of Change. That's basically it for the anti Tinge Cornet build, and let's get onto the battlefield to get the action going. At the start of the battle, we are positioning our Flesh Hounds in the forest, hiding them, biding time for the perfect opportunity to pounce on the rear and flanks of the Tinge army. And that's because, due to the magic damage on the Tinge infantry, including the Horrors and the Forsaken, the Flesh Hounds who rely on their physical resistance for protection, their resistance will get bypassed and their trade against these Tinge infantry will be rather not cost effective. And that's why we will be using them for a rear charge only. And instead we will be waiting, waiting for the Chaos Warriors of Corn to push into the front line, as well as enough resources, 1200 gold, for our um, Gorby's Chariot to be summoned from the reinforcement zone. At the same time, our Flyers will be pushing ahead, since my opponent here only bringing the Chaos Furies and also Carol's Fate Weaver as the starting army, we do not have a lot of threats to counter our Chaos Furies just yet because, well, despite having the shield on the Teenage Furies, if the Corn Furies can get a charge on the Teenage Furies, their buffed up melee stats due to the Frenzy ability can still help them wreck all these Teenage Furies in the skies, Teenage Shield or not. Also, excuse me for the lighting right there because on this patch of snow on Broken Lake Gully, the snow reflection for the light is so intense it gives viewers temporary snow blindness, making visibility quite a problem. Anyways, back to the battle. We are not having a lot of action just yet as my infantry, the Cornet Warriors, are taking their time to run forward. Only 28 speed. It really takes them some time to reach the front line, especially when my hounds are not positioned to charge just yet. Although, as I say it, we have some Cornet Warriors charging out from the flanks, pushing all the way from Objective 1 to the middle, and now we also have the Gorby's Chariots pushing up ahead and see if they can start spawn camping any spawned uh, Tinge reinforcement. But it seems that they are turning around, going to charge into this blob of Tinge infantry like the Blue Horrors, while the um, spawn of Tinge are being hunted down by the big nasty Bloodthirster, and at the back, the Flamers being exposed due to the lack of infantry protection, just got destroyed, eaten alive by the Flesh Hounds and the Furies, and now despite the Doom Knights being summoned to try to save them, it is too little too late, and the Flesh Hounds, despite being caught, will be tying down the Doom Knights as well. But in the front line, Tinge has retaliated with a well-placed Pendulum, doing massive damage to my densely packed Chaos Warriors. Although the front line is definitely not looking too well for the Tinge army, as the Gorby's Chariot here is just rolling right through all these blue horrors and going to push into the back line as well. As the Doom Knight is being tied down by Flesh Hounds and they are now grounded while the armor piercing chariots, the Gorby's, will be charging in, smacking them in the face with their big giant claws, uh, fists? They look like gorillas, so I would say fists. Anyways, at the objective 3 here, we have some Forsaken here stationed protecting this objective, but they need to get into the um, middle objective as the Tinge army is wavering in the middle, buckling as only the spawn of Tinge are remaining in combat. They do have a pretty good weapon strength and armor sundering, but the superior melee defense, 40 melee defense against the Tinge 28 attack, the spawns are not putting too many hits in. 
they are not breaking through all these Chaos Warriors of Korn, especially without any Forsaken support. And with the frontline buckling, my Gorby's Chariot using their superior mass is just pushing straight through into the backs. The reinforcements of Tinge are being summoned, trying to shoot into my frontline, shooting at the um, Bloodthirster as well as my Flash Hounds. But they are charging in, especially the Gorby's just plowing right through the formations. Horrors might be annoying little fuckers due to their um, shields as well as their magic attacks and also being demons they are not routing from battle but it seems that we can just ignore them with the Gorbis pushing straight through and now we are hitting up their backline, the flamers being summoned trying to focus down my lord as well as the chariots but with the Gorbis chariots ignoring just going straight through the whole blue horror blob these flamers are being silenced, buying time for the exalted bloodthirster to extract himself from this blob, landing straight inside these armor-piercing missile shotgun flamer unit. And now these expensive range power is being shut down by my chariots and the bloodthirster, while I still have more reinforcement pouring in from the other side of the battlefield. And now the Doom Knights, despite dispatching some of my hounds and furies, they are extremely tattered and I have a second unit of Gorbius chariot summoning and going straight for their spawn point, trying to basically bottle up all their reinforcement in the deployment zone. My exalted bloodthirster is now wrecking all these flamers, the chariots are still wreaking havoc among the ranks of the, a bunch of pink horrors. They're being shot up by the blue horrors, but with their heavy armor, they should handle themselves just fine. Since the horrors missile doesn't have a lot of armor piercing and will be largely mitigated. And now with both flanks being hit by chariots, these blue horrors are in big trouble, especially with some flash hounds supporting this fight with the horn of corn buffing up their melee attack to all the way up to 62. While at the back, at the spawn point, these pink horrors being bottled up again by a bunch of Gorby's chariots. The Bloodthirster is now giving Kairos a proper beating, giving the Teenage forces a taste of their own medicine, flaming all of them in close vicinity. And with that, my Teenage opponent here throws in the towel and decides to surrender. So well, basically the idea of this build is to use the mobility to your advantage. You have the chariots who can counteract any of the horrors due to their low model mass. While the um, flash hounds will be targeting the flamers using their superior speed to catch these slippery flaming infantry and kill them with those massive weapon strength and magic attacks. While well, in the front line we will have the chaos warriors who are now well, nowhere to be found due to being routed by a bunch of focus fire of uh, Teenage Missiles, but they do have the shields and heavy armor to absorb all these horror missiles, and with the 40 melee defense, they can tank out decently against Forsaken and Spawns. While you also have the Exalted Bloodthirster and more Flash Hounds, in case there are any heavy armor mobility like the Doom Knight and the Chaos Knight of Teenage, and you can just counter them with the Exalted Bloodthirster while catching them with the Flash Hounds of Corn. So overall, Teenage, although being a really nasty, annoying force with their shield and whatnot, Corn does have all the tools you need to counteract them. You have the chariots to plow through all their infantry, you have the, your superior infantry to hold down the line with the anvil, while the hammer, the chariot and the flesh hounds will hammer back into the rears of the Teenage Forsaken as well as the horrors, while the chariots can just easily push through their infantry defenses and start pinning down their units at the back, and if there are any units trying to push out, they can just pull away and seek another engagement like these separated pink horrors. While in the skies, screamers might be an issue to counter Bloodthirster, but Furies of Corn does have a really good engagement against these Screamers. They are anti-large, right? So the infantry size Chaos Furies will not be subjected to those anti-large bonus, while the Chaos Furies with their melee attack 44 due to that frenzy buff can easily finish off all these Screamers of Teenage who doesn't have the most armor and rely heavily on their physical resistance. And you can see that the Screamers just got quickly wiped due to all those Chaos Fury is surrounding them and being forced to fight the Exalted Bloodthirster. As for the single entities of the Teenage Army like Kairos Fate Weaver, Korn can easily dispatch them with the Exalted Bloodthirster as they are the best melee unit in the game. 
With a bunch of combat buffs, Teen single entities have no hope in dueling these exalted demons. And even if your opponent brings out some Teen spawns, you can simply hold them down with a high defense unit such as the Warriors of Corrin with shields or with halberds and then charge in with the Bloodthirster or recharge with some flash hounds and finish them off. The low armor on these kill spawn means that they are a rather glass cannon unit despite being unbreakable and will be quickly finished off if surrounded by enemy entities. Overall, this anti teen spell is all about the disruption you can get by using those heavy chariots to pull through your opponent's defensive infantry and just basically charge into the back line, silence the flamers and maybe just tie down any missile units so that Flesh Hounds and the Bloodthirster can drop in and start massacring your opponent's damage dealers. And your opponent doesn't really have a good way to deal with them because stuff like say Screamers can get focused down by Furies and being chased off by Flesh Hounds if they dare to land and all they can rely on is probably some of these Forsaken infantry you try to beat back your Flesh Hounds and Furies and stuff like say Doom Knights, they are powerful units but only having so many models and such an expensive unit, once they land they will also be tied down by a bunch of Flesh Hounds being focused down and dragged down into the mud. And that's basically it for today's video. If you enjoy it and want to see more, remember to keep an eye out on the channel by hitting like and subscribe and get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you have any battle replays that you want me to showcase to cast on the channel, feel free to send it to me via email or on Discord. I'll be sure to check it out. And yeah, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Tacticalage, signing out.